right, uh, welcome back to Neon Run Builds. Today, as you can see, we are building Christmas Tita. Let me just adjust the volume a little bit on the music side. All right, for anybody watching, just let me know how it looks or how it sounds. If you can hear me, and if you're not watching, then, well, I can't say much. Anyway, today we're doing the Christmas Tita by another one of my favorites, Zero Labor. You can visit them at zerolabor.blogspot.com to find more of their work. Uh, Tita is a character that um, Zero Labor has created. And... Um, they do a lot of things with them, a lot of interesting uh, settings, outfits, um, and it's just it's a it's a versatile character they created that they can basically do anything with. What I like about this is that it's almost a paper doll type thing going on where you have a skirt, you have a top, and it would be neat for them to push this idea a little bit further to make it an actual paper doll. I think that would be neat. But um, other than that, there's one thing left to do, and that's to put this all together. So, as usual, we start off with our trusty scissors. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out the shapes. We're not gonna trim the trim everything yet. We um start with uh, just cutting out the shapes. And enjoy the uh, background chiptune music by Holy Connie. Nice body. side. There we have it. Tita by Zero Labor. Uh, this one is a little more... Uh, it's basic, but it's still a little more advanced just based on the, uh, the shapes that we're cutting out. So once we have each shape separated, we'll go ahead and just keep cutting. Razor blade, straight edge to cut these pieces out just because it'll make it a little easier for us. Don't be afraid to drag your razor along a couple times just to ensure a clean cut is made.
Holy Connie, everybody. This is 8-Bit Betty. A lot of designs you can use the scissors or straight edge and a razor. Um, I think for this one it's mostly just straight edges, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep working with the straight edge and the blade. There is no rule stating that you have to use one or the other. I like to use a combination of both. I find that makes the job work really good. Sometimes the rules we set up, or rules we set up ourselves, and a lot of the time you can find that it's okay to break those rules. In a previous um, stream, I was talking about designer Alex Gwynn and how she's established rules for herself and then once an understanding of how the rules work, she then began rewriting them. That leads to innovation. So if you set up a rule saying that I'm only going to use scissors, that's good until you realize you don't have to only use scissors. Sometimes the blade is mightier. But because you set up those rules, you gained a better understanding of how to use scissors. So I don't look at rules so much as rules, I look at them as challenges. Challenge yourself. That's how I got good at Minesweeper. looking for an app to play that challenges you, I would recommend Minesweeper Collector. That is a very fun, challenging game. Very innovative way to play a classic game. Minesweeper Collector. Look it up in the App Store. And the Play Store. That was 8 Bit Betty. And this also is 8 Bit Betty. I've got it set on random. Decided to give us two doses of 8 Bit Betty. 
a giant mad. Measure twice, cut once. Every now and then you get a design um, that will either have no border or very thin border, and I think this one looks like it has no border, so you can see that um, it's just the color, of the shape, and no hard line on the outside, so you're just going to measure where it meets up and cut it. So measure right there. Cut. So sometimes when you get in situations like this, measure twice, cut once really, really comes in handy. Got to silence my phone. Hold on. Um, let me check that. All done. I forgot to cut off over here, right in there, right, little piece right there, got it. Alright, next piece. How about we do Tita's torso. On a previous stream I was talking about the reason I got into paper craft and it was because of paper dolls. Not the kind of paper dolls you would uh, typically think of. There was a comic book that I used to read in Mexico when uh, we would go there for the summers called Carmatron y los Transformables. I would read this comic religiously. It was my introduction to many things. And it was awesome. And in the last pages, in the very back, 
they would have these dolls that you cut out. You glue onto like cereal box type cardboard. You cut them out and then you would sew the joints together so that they would kind of move but not they didn't have like full articulation. I didn't turn the what's it called on. Hold on, let me just turn on the shuffle. Else we're just gonna hear the same artists over and over again. But uh, yeah, it was these the heroes, God Matron and the Transformables. You would get um, you'd be able to collect the whole series of paper action figures. I guess you could call them since uh. People had very little spending money. Well, I wouldn't say people. A lot of kids had very little spending money, especially to buy toys. Paper action figures was the next best thing, and boy, were they the best. So that was my first introduction. I really love those things, and I really miss them. And I've been scouring the internet to try to find them. Turns out. The creator of God Matron has a Facebook page now, and you can download a bunch of, uh, uh, on the website too, you can download a bunch of the old paper action figures. Needless to say, I downloaded a ton of them, and uh, I'll probably do a stream building one from start to finish, from paper to cutting them out, to gluing, to stitching. And so that's how I was first introduced to the world of paper craft. And then card models, and then like all the other fun stuff that you see here now. I used to have a huge collection of paper crafts, but we have moved so much over the years that they really don't keep. And I used to have a... I wouldn't say an anger problem. I would have a frustration problem. I'd get frustrated a lot. And, uh... Paper toys seem to be a very, very easy target when you're frustrated. They crush very easily, <laughs> so I've lost a lot to uh, my childish behaviors. I'm better now, thanks to uh, tantric Buddhism. Not really though, more like uh, westernized Zen Buddhism. Thanks to the likes of Alan Watts. If you're not familiar with Alan Watts, I recommend you watch a few YouTube videos. With Alan, featuring Alan Watts's lectures set to music. Some really enlightening stuff, and uh, he's kind of a. Um, He's a, kind of an anti-guru guru, because despite him not actually being a guru, he's a guru. I would also recommend listening to the Duncan Trussell Family Hour podcast. Duncan Trussell, while he used to be a stand-up comedian, has now become a podcasting guru of sorts. But he's filled with a lot of um, just wisdom. Childlike wonder and wisdom. I consider him the Neon Neurons unofficial guru.
yeah, sometimes, um, like I can say I had a really childish, uh, frustration and dealt with it in really childish ways. Sometimes it's not so much growing up, it's more maturing. Because when you think of growing up, you know, I put away childish things, I stopped playing with toys, and I stopped playing video games. It's not so much about not doing that kind of stuff, it's more about dealing with life in ways that isn't you kicking and screaming. It's dealing in life, dealing with life in ways that are constructive. I can vouch for that because I can't tell you how many hours of paper crafts I have destroyed out of childish anger and frustration. Learning to cope, learning to deal, and learning to process things helps a lot. Like I was interested in seeing, or not interested, fascinated. I was fascinated in seeing they were treating uh, some mental illnesses, emotional uh, illnesses, with. Buddhism. Uh, I read a report where they were using they were using Buddhism to treat bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is one of those strange anomalies of a disorder where it kind of um, has a broad sweeping diagnosis. But, I mean, the fact that they were encouraging meditation and chanting and stuff like that to help deal with uh, the stuff that bipolar disorder, not bipolar disorder, sorry, borderline personality disorder, that's what it was. The BPs always get me. I'm confused when it comes to the BPs. The borderline personality disorder is what they are now using Buddhism to help borderlines cope and to handle <clears throat> handle the situations that they find themselves in and to handle their emotions and their feelings in a way that isn't um, overwhelming or in a way that they can calm themselves down. But I mean, it's, it still stands that borderline, borderline personality disorder seems to be one of those general disorders, kind of like a general anxiety disorder, where it's just, uh, you're just generally anxious the whole time. There's no real reason for it. You just, you just are, you know? But, you know, someday the doctors and psychiatrists, psychologists, medical people will get better at diagnosing things and we'll be able to understand ourselves better. But going back to the fact, I think that it's very interesting that they're using Buddhism to treat these disorders. I think that uh, exposes a whole new level of remedy. That doctors are finally, you know, stepping back and not throwing medication at everything. They're starting to throw lifestyle changes and um, other kinds of techniques to help. 
people, I guess, fix their brains? I don't know if that's the right way to put it. Yeah, I wouldn't say fix their brains. Um, understand themselves and the world around them. And I can tell you, meditation helps. I can't tell you how it helps, but I can tell you that it does help. I mean, you'll find studies that praying makes people happier. Or praying changes things. And you can't, doctors can't figure out why. Researchers don't know why. They just know that sometimes it works. Sometimes there is no rhyme or reason. Sometimes it just works. And that's, you just have to accept that. Meditation works. Praying works. How does it work? Who knows? Does it work? Well, some say it does, some say it doesn't. But you will never know until you try it. That's the other thing too. You gotta try it. Don't knock it unless you've tried it. I always say. I used to have a really big mouth. A really ignorant teenager and I would just... Anything I didn't try, I would... Anything that I thought was stupid, I would make fun of. Here's a story. Judah and the Lion. I make fun of Judah and the Lion. My kids love Judah and the Lion. Or they like the song. Uh, I can't... It was a... Uh, uh, what was that song that was popular at the time? It was a suit and jacket. It was a... Um, Take It All Back. I don't know if that's the official name, but it was that song. And then I took my daughter to a 21 Pilots concert. And Judah and the Lion was the opening act, or one of the opening acts. And man, I gotta tell you, the energy that Judah and the Lion brings to their show changed my life. It was the most. It was. It was a. Oh, it was a. It was pretty cool. It was really cool. And then. They came to our hometown, and I was like, "We are seeing them. We're gonna." And when it was a small venue, so I was like, "Yes, we are definitely seeing Judah and the Lion at this small venue." And, th and this was the show that actually changed my life. It wasn't them opening for Twenty One Pilots. That was like the gateway that I entered to have my life changed. And it wasn't until the show in our hometown that they did at this small, cozy little venue. Oh, it was a spiritual experience. I'm telling you, from start to finish. Tyson Motzenbacher. Is it Motzenbacher or Motzenbacher? Anyway, Tyson Motzenbacher was the opening act. And kid you not, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit was in that room. I don't know if uh, <laughs> Judah and the Lion or Tyson Motzenbachin are religious people, but man, they really brought the energy, like the positive energy. It was amazing. It just, the fans were, the crowd was it was just, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. It changed my life. It was one of those things, it just changes your life. You look at your life in a, in a completely new way. You realize life doesn't have to be hard. You don't have to stress. You don't have to worry.
I never imagined I would have a spiritual experience at a concert of a band I didn't really care too much for. But now, I still get chills when I hear their songs. Going to Mars. Suit and jacket. Booty work. <laughs> By their fruits he shall know them. Jude and the lion bring good fruit, good energy, just all around good vibes. I, I can honestly vouch for that too. I went to a, I took my daughter to a Foster the People concert, and the energy and the vibe there was just completely different. It wasn't like, it wasn't bad energy. It just wasn't like the energy that I felt at Judah and the Lion or Twenty One Pilots or Ghostland Observatory. Ghostland Observatory, they bring good energy too. I, wish they would come back. I don't even know if they're still touring. I heard they got back together. If you don't know who Ghostland Observatory is, I recommend looking them up. I don't think you'll hear them on the radio. Staying up late. Last night I didn't get to bed till 4. I guess it's just that time of the year where sleep is a hard thing to get to. But yeah, so like I was saying, I, I tend to um, criticize things that I'm not familiar with. And I'm getting better at not doing that as much. Judah and the Lion has taught me much. We can cut the rest out with the scissors now. So this is the, oh, the kind of confusing part. Uh, you have the arm here. Then we have the neck, and the neck folds into the head. No, this goes into the shoulder, this turns into the neck, this folds into the head, and then this piece we're gonna curl to create kind of a um, hair loop type deal. I will show you when we get to that spot, and we are almost there. It's a really neat design, uh, Zero Labor uh, seemed to have put a lot of thought and work into this. It's really cool. Once it all comes together, you've got the head, and then the body, and then you'll have the skirt that just goes, see? I mean, it even almost fits right now. Skirt, then the top, and then the feet. Once it comes together, bam, it looks pretty dang cool. Like I said, I think Zero Labor could push it a little further and create an actual dressable paper doll with this. I don't know if, um... Zero is gonna do anything else with uh, a Tita. There's a punker Tita. There's like a... I think a schoolgirl outfit Tita. But, 
today we are focusing on Christmas Dita. I should probably just keep that right there so that our go. Yeah, right there. No, that's upside down. Alright, let's put that right here. Tita. There we go. I would say the worst part about paper craft is cutting it out. That's a pretty good critique, wouldn't you say? The worst thing about something is actually having to do something. <laughs> That's not a bad, not a bad deal at all. Oh, I got the little cotton ball right there. All right, cut that out. All right we have left is the last arm and once we get this arm done then we can start gluing her together and we will have her done in no time We are listening to Activation Theme by Bit Shifter. Another great chiptune artist. anybody has any questions about what I'm doing feel free to ask and I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge Alright, we are done with the cutting. Next, we move on to the gluing. And if you're new to the stream, ah, we're not gluing just yet. Here's another repetitive uh, moment. We're gonna do um, the scoring. And what the scoring does is it makes folding things much easier. But let, let, allow me to demonstrate. So we got this line here line coming right across here that we're gonna just run over with this little ball this little stylus with the little ball on the tip and what it does is it crushes the paper to make a path that allows us to easily fold down. Damn see that? 
See how sharp that is now? So exact. So that's what scoring does. Otherwise, we're gonna have to go in and fold it. And there's a fold without scoring. Not as nice, not as crisp. So scoring is tedious. It does take up a bit of time. Remember, we're doing this because it's an art and it's relaxing and it just makes us happy to do it. Some people smoke drugs, some people drink, some people look at porn. We work on paper crafts because we're the real psychotic people. <laughs> Why would we do this to ourselves? For art, the same reason any artist does anything. For the art, for the craft, for goodness sake. Meditation. It's like a meditation. I mean, ask yourself, why does anybody do anything? Why does anybody, why do we do drugs? To escape reality, to forget our problems, to experience something. And that's what this is. This is us trying to connect, trying to experience, trying to feel. Somebody designed this, somebody created this, and then somebody put it on the internet and then wanted to share this. They wanted to share this. And what are we doing? We're turning it into something that will ultimately sit on a shelf, sit on a desktop, it'll sit somewhere in three-dimensional space. Okay. There's a very faint line right here that we're gonna have to score real quick. That is. Uh, there's another line right there. Very faint. You can hardly see it. Um, a lot of the times you got to mess around with your printer settings to get the uh, ink to sit just right. Make sure you select the correct paper too. I think I was not using the right paper settings. Because if you use too much ink, the uh, paper will absorb it and it'll spread and bleed and then you won't be able to see very faint lines. I think I might have used the wrong setting here. So there is Tita's head. How about that? So there's Tita. That's her head right there. Let me get a little closer. I think we can go ahead and glue this together. Here is our glue application apparatus. It's got a little bit of glue on it. People use brushes, people use toothpicks, people use the glue cap itself. Good grief, a mess. You just glue along here. I find this to be the best tool. Um, it's an awl or a hole puncher or whatever you want to call it. I call it my glue application apparatus. And all you want to do is you're going to find the tab that you want to glue, so I'm going to glue this tab. And unlike the other ones we've done previously, this one doesn't have any numbers. He leaves it up to the, uh, the builder, the craftsman, to put it together themselves. So you're going to have to use a lot of intuition. If you've been building a lot, it's no problem. If this is your first time, you usually want to go with how it folds in. So it folds in like that. We're gonna start with these ones. This one and this one. Just spread a little bit there. If you want a really strong bond, you'll put it on the, the uh, facing side and then you'll put it on the tab itself. This creates 
the superior bond. Then you just hold it for a little bit. Um, if you're lucky, you'll have a pair of tweezers sitting, and you can use that. just a little bit till it's nice and secure. Well, I'm going to drink some chamomile tea. With added lemon and honey. I don't know if you can hear it, but my throat's a little raspy. <clears throat> I just get off work before I start these streams. Now that that's settled, we'll do this other side. So spread a little bit right there. Spread a little bit on the tab itself. And then press together. Hold. Get your trusty tweezies out. Blowing it a little bit to let the glue dry, and that also helps create a nice little adhesion. The glue that I'm using is um, Aliens Tacky Glue and it works good because it stays tacky for longer but once it grabs hold of something it's pretty dang secure. set. Then we're going to fold this side back right under there. So it's going to go like a little box lid. Yeah. Alright, that's how it's going to look. So let's go ahead and uh, take your glue applicating apparatus. And the same deal. We're going to spread some on the inside wall and then on the corresponding tab. Corresponding tab. And then press. Get our tweezers out. Crease. Your little bond there. Just hold it in. Shout out to my one and only viewer who seems to be here every night. Others come and go. That one is always there. want to uh, give my appreciation and let you know that I'm very grateful that I'm not sitting here talking to myself. There's always somebody listening, I guess. <laughs> the message on. So I'm just going to smear it on the other side and then spray it on the inside. If you get any on the um, the outer thing, don't panic. What you want to do, get your finger, just kind of wipe it off real quick, real quick. You don't want to spread it. You don't want to press it down and kind of rub it off. You want to just flick it off. There you go. Got a nice adhesion. Get up, trusty old. tweezers and head is gone so we got Tita's head all set there's her head right there let's see what the um so the head's gonna just float above the body and this the arms are gonna create the uh, the neck area 
but we'll get to that when we get to that. Let's uh, let's start scoring Tita's torso. You can see the lines a lot better on um, this pattern. I guess it just depends on the color too, but you can see the lines are very, very thin. So if on the black areas, printing thin lines, I don't know if you can see them. See, they're almost impossible to see, and a lot of times you're just gonna have to use your intuition, trust your gut. teaching you not to trust your gut but you gotta trust your gut because you know what's good for you you know what you need I got a story about that too if you want to hear it All right. you didn't say you didn't so I'm assuming you do I had a job before, probably the best job I've ever had. Actually I can say yeah, it was the best job I ever had. It really made you feel like you were doing something good. But um, the job required us to wear full body suits, Tyvek, looks well, like that plastic, full Tyvek body suits. And work in any kind of weather under any kind of circumstances AC no AC Sun is blazing no Sun at all and it's freezing and sometimes we would work what was the most we worked I can't even remember maybe Man, maybe 12 hours straight. I think we, we did pull on 12 hours straight once. Maybe on many occasions we've done 12 hours straight. Uh, no lunch. You eat breakfast at the hotel. You don't eat lunch. And then sometimes you're too tired to even eat dinner. And you don't eat again until breakfast. But you're pushing your body to the limit. You're going as hard as you can for as long as you can. And one day we were at a hotel and we were finished with the job. We got finished early, so we went back to the hotel and we're all hanging out in our different hotel rooms. And man, I was craving salad. I was just so hungry for lettuce and vegetables and like red onions. It was just like my body was like, I need these things. I need these things. So I grabbed my wallet and put my shoes on and started walking out of the hotel and walking down the street looking for a, a Chinese buffet place because Chinese buffet places is are probably one of the best places to get salad oh you can eat salad and so my supervisor saw me walking down the street he was coming back because he had gone out to eat and he saw me walking down the street and he's like hey where are you going and I was like, man, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm really craving salad. And he's like, ah, uh, he's like, you need to listen to your body. Your body knows what it needs. And I was like, yeah, I guess it does. And then I went, went to, I found a Chinese restaurant just up the, up the road. Ordered myself a all-you-can-eat buffet, and I just sat there and I ate salad, plate of plate after plate of salad. Man, let me tell you, it was the best most delicious salad I ever ate so yeah you got to learn how to listen to yourself and how to trust yourself because your body knows what's best for you your mind will know what's best for you you just got to trust yourself and there are people out there who are telling you not to There are people out there who want you to trust them, but they don't know you like you know yourself. Okay, we're just gonna hold on to that. 
let it sit. Very simple. Very simple design. That's what I try to teach my kids too, is we can't always judge what they want, judge what they need, or even we can do what's best for them according to our experience. But I mean, at the end of life, at the end of childhood, children need to know how to be confident and to do what is best for them. At the end of teenagehood, into adulthood, they have to have that confidence to know themselves well enough. And the sad thing is, is that most of us are experiencing all this for the first time ourselves, so... I mean, I didn't know what was best when I was a kid. My parents really didn't know what I wanted, and because we were all confused, I spent a lifetime trying to figure stuff out. And only recently am I getting close to the point where I know exactly what it is I want out of life now. And I'm working for it. I'm willing to work for it now. Alright, so we glued the bottom, um, and you can see it's coming up, and it's kind of hard to put a finger across. The best thing to do is to just find a flat surface, press down on it for a couple, a few seconds, five to ten seconds, until it gets that nice strong bond. And once that happens, let it go, and looks like it took. So now we have the body. We have her head. Not quite complete because she's got no neck. So we gotta build the neck. And that's where this next part comes in. But before we make the neck, she can't just run around topless. That's not, it's not good. It's not correct. People don't like that. It makes people uncomfortable. But what do we do behind closed doors? Oh man, we peep as much as this of this as we can, don't we? Always looking. Always looking. Oh, but you can't let anybody know that's what you're looking at. You gotta keep it secret. Keep it hidden. Human nature is a very funny thing. So that's... The tab. And then you can faintly see there's fold lines right there, right there, and right there. So we're going to just score those lines. This is Reformat the Planet by Bit Shifter. Second time we've heard him tonight. If you ever get the chance to hear Reformat the Planet, the live version, Oh man, I would recommend you seek it out. It is one of the most epic, uplifting chiptune songs ever written. I mean, I've said this before that chiptune is the music of the universe. It's the universe talking to you. It's what the universe sounds like when it talks. Reformat the planet is when it actually says something. And what it's saying is it's telling you how the universe was born. The universe is telling you how it was born with Reformat the planet. At least that's how I feel. That's what it tells me. <laughs> I'm sure it'll tell you something completely different. So there we go. That's gonna be her shirt. Isn't that cute? I have to say, I wish there was a way you could pop the top, pop the top, and change it out. So you can have a whole ensemble of outfits. Just a bunch of different things. That would be so, so totally rad. Alright, so we're going to glue this. 
do application apparatus. Dab a little there. And dab a little bit right there. So Zero Labor had a great idea. So we could run with it. We could push it so much further. So there's the top. I don't know if we're gonna... Yeah, I think we can go ahead and do this. Does it go on this way? I guess it really doesn't matter. Whichever side you want the, um, the little strap to go on. So we just put it over here. Trusty old tweezers. Hold it in place. Hold your breath. Good. All right. Oh, look at that chest. Yeah. All right. Do we want to put our arms on? I think actually no. See, I think actually we might be able to um Okay, so this is the arm and this is the... All right. So it's going to go like this and then this becomes the curl. But I'm thinking about doing something different. We're gonna try and experiment and see how it works. But we'll get to that soon. Let's give her a skirt. Because as sexy as these undies are, she's gotta be modest. Girl gotta be modest. So let's go ahead and put her skirt on. Is this holy corn? Oh, okay. There we go. So we scored all that. Fold, 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 and fold. Right. So this is gonna go on there. Very nice. All right. These all lined up so you can see exactly what we're building here. I think we might have to change uh, the camera up a bit. Oh, I just might need to get a different workspace. Whoa! Alright, glue application apparatus. Here's a little tip if your glue applicator apparatus gets a lot of gunk on it, fold up a bunch of um, pieces of cardboard paper, scrap paper, and then just stab it a couple times. This gets the glue right off. See, there you go, nice and clean. The day was born. I think eventually I'm just gonna stop talking during these things. Oh, I'll experiment. I'll try one, one stream. See how it goes. So you got the glue on that side, you got the glue on the tab, simply just fold it over. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a bit of excess glue leaking out. 
And what we do with that, make sure your fingers dry, just wipe it right off. And then just rub it off your finger. Get your trusty tweezers out. There we go. Hold it. Okay, so now there's a front and a back to this. This is the back, and this is the front. You can see this has a belt buckle on it. So you don't want to put it on backwards. You gotta pay attention to little details like that. So this, obviously her front. I'll go ahead and put that on it. So there's her skirt. And the shirt. But we can't put the shirt on just yet because we haven't put her arm, neck, hair yet. So let's work on her arms next. Or should we work on her feet? Let's work on her feet. So we put feet together. Let's get our stylus out. everything and it all goes essentially goes where it's supposed to go it's not that tricky it's just a basic cube what kind of cube we call it a rhomboid Rumbus. Alright, so I think the first place we're going to apply glue would be these two to bring this loop. We're going to close that and then we're just going to close the two side flaps instead of trying to glue one this, one um, the edge all the way around first. So let's get our glue applicator apparatus. Dab there, and we will complete the circle. Hold it. One, two, three, four, five. I think that seems about right. Got a little glob of glue right there. I'm just gonna pick that off. All right, looks like it's holding. So now we're just gonna apply glue to this flap, this flap, and this flap, and then lay it down and line it up and hold it. And there's a secret to making that work. So maybe a little bit more than that. All right. So. Alright, 
and then we're just going to fold this flap over and line it up. The glue stays tacky long enough to allow you to adjust. And once we have, and here's the secret, once you have it all down, go ahead and just press down on it. Nice even pressure. You don't want to push too hard because you're not trying to crush the, uh, the paper itself. You just want it enough to hold, to grip, and to create that nice secure bond. And that's what we're looking for. Right there. Oh. Looks like there's not enough glue right here. No problem. That's why we use a pointy applicator. So you can get into those hard to reach places when stuff like this happens. Just get a little bit, open your glue up. Okay, so just slightly bend the paper back. And then you're gonna insert the glue right there. And I would recommend doing both sides, doing the tab right there, and then doing the wall it's gonna to attach to. Just close it. Once again, bring it down to the paper to the flat surface and then just press and hold it for about 10 seconds. Listen to the music. Now it's, uh, it's secure. So let's go ahead and do the same to the other side. Do the same thing, fold it over, there's a little bit of excess coming through, so no worry, just quickly swipe it off, and then we'll do the same thing, press down, listen to the music for a minute. Holy Connie, everybody, nice body. Look it up on, I believe it's a uh, band camp, Holy Connie on band camp. There's the leg. So she's almost coming together. Let's do her other leg real quick. And then we can put her arms on. Big shout out to our new follower, Vara08. Appreciate it a lot. I'm just trying to spread the joy of papercraft, and I'm glad to see somebody is interested. Well, I don't know if you came for the uh, chip tune or the paper craft. Either way, welcome aboard this crazy train. Just like the other leg, we started off with uh, closing this. The same thing.
believe that's good. Alright, and then we're going to close these ends up. This is such a happy song, I love it. Like last time, I'm gonna apply glue here, 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 maybe a little bit on this side too. Close it and then press. So let's clean off our applicator. Well, it's always useful to keep scrap paper handy and not throw it away immediately. I think we're gonna need a little more glue than that. Glue's still a little wet here, but that's fine. We can continue because it's tacky glue. Stays holding. So let's go ahead and try to move to this side, this side, this side, and then around the edge here. Fold it over and then apply some pressure and listen to the 8 bit Betty. Anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask away. And there's the other foot. There, so we got the head, we got the skirt, we got the shirt. Now the tricky part. The arms, neck, and hair. an interesting trick to how the hair works. It's going to fold back on itself and then roll until you get to the white part. So you're going to fold that and you see there's a little white spot. So that glues right there and it creates kind of a roll. So we'll get to this in a minute. First, let's finish folding this. So there's the neck, and there is the arm. So what's going to happen now is we're going to take the torso, and this is going to come across like that, right up there. And then the neck comes up, and then the hair roll comes right over here. So let's do the other arm so that we can get a better idea of what exactly it is we're doing.
It's a really clever design, to be quite honest. How he, the neck, the hair, and the arm all connects, and then it creates the top surface of the body. wonder I've been thinking about this all day to try something different with the hair kind of making a, a spiral like a curly but um let's attach the arms first okay so remember this is gonna attach to the top of the body here and it's gonna create one half of the neck and then the other one glues on the other side and creates the second half. So it's like that. So the body engages the shoulders. Like that. It's kind of neat really. Instead of putting the flap here and then gluing this on top of it, this conceals it. So minimalist is always the best way to go and there's a little all right I'll show you a trick there's a little spot of um, dry glue right here right there so all you want to do is lightly take your razor blade just scrape it off you want to damage the paper as little as possible there you go and then it's gone all right so let's um i think we can start by gluing the neck together right there. So we're just going to apply a little bit of glue on the bottom and then a little bit on the top. Don't get too carried away with that. And then just glue it together. And let's move our body over here. Just press that together. Secure bond. Get our trusty tweezers out and press. Try to keep it all even. Looks a little insectoid to me. it's nice and even all right so now that we got that done let's go ahead and glue it to the top here it's going to glue just like that just like I showed you before so let's go ahead and start applying the glue to the top there Start with the back, back side. Make sure it's nice and flush. Right. And see, this is why we need to put our skirt on. <gasps> Whoa! I almost messed this up. Okay. We should have put her skirt on before we did all this, but luckily we didn't go too far. I'm just going to make sure this seals. We are going to have to put her arms up and pull her skirt down over all this because we should have put her skirt on before. So just slide. And this is why I'm saying this would make a perfect paper doll if we could figure out a way to make the head come off without ruining the integrity. Oh, but I don't see you there. And we're gonna have to put her tank top on. All right, not to fear, we'll just do the same thing we did. Slide it over her 
there. Now you don't want it to go under the uh, strap. We're going to want her arm though to go under the strap. So let's slide her arm through there and then slide her other arm right in there. Pull it through the strap. Her skirt keeps coming up. There you go. Then we'll slide tank top down, over, and there we have it. Alright, it's going to be a little tricky because we're going to have to apply the glue right into this area right here and then hold it down. So I probably should have um, glued the strap because the strap comes over and I probably should have done that last, but I didn't. Not to worry about it. So let's uh, put glue on the tab here. So we're just putting glue on the tab and we're trying to be as careful as possible not to get it anywhere else that it doesn't need to be. Right when my nose gets into the camera. Okay, so we got the glue applied. Just gonna push down. Make sure that it's straight in here. Well, now we know for next time. There definitely will be a next time because, like I said, this isn't the only Tita model that Zero Labor has made. It's made several. Alright, so we'll put our arms down. And you could probably use a ruler because it's going to be hard to put a flat surface. So, another thing you want to do is if you have a straight edge or a ruler, just hold it for a little bit. Just put it to the side. Put your ruler, straight edge, flat surface to the side that you want pressure applied to. Wait a few seconds. Looks like it's good. There's a little bit of um, looks like a little glue didn't take right there. No problem. Just do what we did last time. Put a little bit of glue on your applicator. But you don't want too much. Separate it slightly and then just a small dab will do. Get the flat surface. And her skirt still coming up. <laughs> She's a wild one, isn't she? Oh, that Tita. Hold it. Okay. And there, now it looks like we have a good hold. Good hold on this side. Just need to scrape off a little bit of excess glue right in there. Just take your razor, scrape a little bit of it away, little by little. There we go. Can go down. All right. So now we got the um, aside from her looking like an insect. Let's fold this down to see right here. This here is where her head's gonna go. Just like that. See, it's coming together, isn't it? So maybe we should probably glue her hair on first, or glue her hair together first. We'll get creative next time. Um, let's just do the model how it's meant to be. So first what we're going to do is apply glue to the back side of this one so that it folds over and stays over. Let's clean off our applicator. We are almost done. I'd say about 
10 more minutes and we're finished. We can add her to the collection of Santas that we have so far. Okay, so let's go put her right here. The best way to do that would be to put it on the end of this top tab, this top one right here. Okay. Hold it down. And then what we're gonna do next, let's see, this little, um, so what's the best way to see it right there? This little white bit right here is where we're gonna apply glue. And then we're going to roll this part right here around and glue it right there. Once this is completely dry. Where are my tweezers at? There they are. A little... Okay, so let's go ahead and get a little bit more glue. Right here. All right. Then we'll roll it around. It is make contact, but it keeps moving. Okay. Just hold it for a minute. Best if I could get my tweezers, but I can't. Sometimes you just gotta be resourceful. There we go. All right, now let's hold it for a little bit. Listen to some good chip tune. This is Wiz Wars Cosmic Waveform. Wiz Wars is an other chiptune artist that you definitely have to look up. Wizwars.bandcamp.com. Tell him Neon Neuron sent you, and he'll have no idea what you're talking about. Perfect. So there's the first little roll of hair, and now we'll do the second one, just the same way we did the first one. Another thing I didn't think about is um, when you have to roll paper like that, one of the best things to do, let's just clean this off real quick, right. is to get something that, like tubular and then just roll it. And this helps to soften the paper. And then you can roll, why is it? 
now that it's already rolled, it makes it a lot easier to glue. See right there. And then we got a little bit of a lip right here. But that's perfectly alright. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah, I got glue on her face. We got a little bit of glue on her apparatus. Once again, we're just trying to get this little white spot right here. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, right there. Yeah, so right here, we're trying to just put a little bit of glue on it. Don't get too sloppy with it. And then loop it around. Bring it right in there. Perfect. And if I could just put my tweezers in on this, it should be good. That looks good on the back. Okay. Hold it for a little bit. And listen to Blaster Head's Killbots. Now we're going to attach, it looks kind of like a, she's a praying mantis, right? Wrong, she's not a praying mantis. There we go. We're going to attach her head to there. So let's start with the, uh, let's start with the front first. So let's start with the, um, actually let's start with the back. Glue on the back tabs. Then line it up. Trying to get too messy with it. And then simply finding the center. Just pressing down. Like that. Like so. And then just holding it until uh, it's dry enough. I guess we can turn it upside down and press down. Ah, don't look! Oh, I can preserve her modesty! Don't look. Oh, yeah, it's still there. Yeah, I'll let you know when it's safe to look. So that looks good. I think we're uh... There's a couple spots that didn't take, like on the edge right here and on the edge right here, which is no problem. Just get a little bit of glue, and like we did last time, just spread it in there on both sides would be ideal. And then, get our straight edge and then press against it. And there's a little bit excess glue coming through, which isn't a problem. Take it off real quick. Just holding it for a little bit until the glue can adhere. There we go. Alright, and then we're going to put a little bit of glue on this side right there. Apply a little glue. Okay. A little there. And we'll just get the excess glue. Get our ruler. Press it. So what I'm doing exactly is I'm using the flat side of the ruler and then just pressing down right where the head meets the neck to create a little bit of pressure there. I 
think we're good for now. Um, Alright, so now we're going to glue the front. Unless you wanted to have a mouth. She can say, I love you. Merry Christmas. Santa baby. Well, <laughs> never mind. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Can't believe I just did that. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and apply glue to the two sides right here. And then the long tab. And then the smaller tab. And we'll just go ahead and seal it up. It's a little trickier now. Alright, so we got that side. And then we'll use our trusty ruler and put pressure on this side. So this little spot in the middle, we could use a, just a tad more glue. Get a little dab of glue. We don't want too much, just a little bit. Right in there. And then we're just sort of cooler to apply some upward pressure. Nice and lush. Alright. I'm not happy with how this turned out. Right there, there's a little pocket. But that was my own, uh, my own error. Wasn't anything on the designer's part. So let's put our legs on. get enough glue because uh really want that to stick. We're gonna give her that cute kawaii stance. One leg on and her other leg and Push down to make sure that it's adhering. And then we shall be finished. Except for one thing that I think I'm gonna add a little bit more glue to the um the little rollers here, her little curls. Right here, I'm gonna put some glue in here and then just press it against the side of her head so that they're not falling out. Yeah, her legs are nice and secure, so let's go ahead and tidy this up. And then we will be done for this episode of Neon Neuron Builds. And then we'll just push that up against the side of the head there. Oh, the music's over. Let's, um, oh, well, it's kind of quiet now. Well, since this is, uh, since this is the meeting time, let's 
play my favorite leaving music. If you're familiar with the Neon Neuron podcast, you would be familiar with this is the song I use as the outro. It's such a cute, happy song. And... And we're done. There is Christmas Tita, all dressed up and ready for Christmas. How do you like it? So we're going to add her to our Santa Claus collection, everybody. There's nice Santa, naughty, creepy Uncle Santa. We have bad word Santa, bad, bad word Santa. This is Alex Gwynn, fold up toys, fold up toys, fold up toys. This is Marshall Alexander Pepakura Santa. And you can look at the older videos to see how to build any of these ones. And now we have Tita Santa, or Christmas Tita. Um, I hope you enjoyed following along, and uh, I really hope that you become interested in the paper craft, arts and crafts, or paper craft, paper bottle, card model, paper toys. Um, this is really fun, I really like it, and I mean, this started off as a flat sheet of paper, and by the end, we have all these various toys or models that you can display around your house, and now we have this very adorable Tita paper craft. So there she is. Uh, oh, her skirt keeps coming up. So, uh, thanks for watching. Um, hit me up, Neon Neuron, on every social, neonneuron.com, neonneuron.net, Neon Neuron on Facebook, Neon Neuron on YouTube, Twitter, and Tumblr, Neon Neuron at gmail.com, or sorry, Neon Neuron 1 at gmail.com, but I mean the best place to hit me up at is um, Instagram. So uh, thanks for watching.